What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for machine learning. In today's video we're going to implement a handwritten digit recognition using neural networks and TensorFlow in Python. So let us get into the code. So first of all we're going to need to import four essential libraries. The first one is called CV2 which is the OpenCV library. Now we're not going to need this library in order to train the neural network and use it but we're going to need it to then later on import our own images. So if you don't have uh, CV2, what you need to do is you need to open up your command line, your uh, CMD or your terminal and just write pip install install opencv.python because I think we didn't talk about this installation yet. So CV2 is important and I'm going to give it an alias of CV so that I can use it in future versions as well. So, as well. so CV3 becomes uh, CV without needing to rename all of uh, the occurrences. So after that, we're going to import, as always, NumPy as NP. We're going to import matplotlib for some visualizations.pyplot.splt. And of course, we're going to import the main library TensorFlow as TF, because TensorFlow is what we're going to use here in order to build the neural network to get uh, the data and also to test it, to apply the neural network and all that. So the first step, of course, is to load the data set of uh, the handwritten digits. And we have the MNIST data set, which is a data set of, I think, I'm not sure, uh, but I think around 60,000 samples of handwritten digits, real handwritten digits uh, written by humans. And in order to import it, what we need to do is we just need to say uh, some variable name, I'm going to call it MNIST, equals tf.keras.datasets. MNIST. And this is the data set with all the handwritten digits. Now, of course, they're also classified. So every time uh, a person drawed or uh, wrote an, uh, an 8 or a 10, it's also classified as an 8 or a 10. So we already know the classifications of all these digits. And the next step is to split it into training and testing data. So we're going to say X train and Y train in a tuple and x test and y test in another tuple. And this is equal to um, mnist.load data. So this load data function loads the mnist data and already splits it into training data and testing data. I think it uses a 20% uh, split or a 10% split, I'm not sure. Uh, but basically, most of the data is contained in the training data and we use a couple of uh, examples or let's say 10, 20% of the examples in order to uh, validate, to evaluate the model. So this is how you do the split. And the next step is of course to um, normalize the data. So to scale it down between zero and one again. Uh, we did this in the past a couple of times. We basically do this to make it uh, easier to be computed. So we're basically scaling down the training data, all the values from, I don't know, zero to 255 if it's, uh, in the RGB uh, or basically just in the grayscale value, you are scaling it down from zero to one so that we have the ratios or the percentages. So we say TF dot, we need to look at the code here because we need to go through a couple of libraries here, TF dot keras dot utils dot normalize. And what we pass of course is the training data and we specify axis one. And this is how you scale down the training data or normalize the training data. Of course, we do the same thing with the test data. So we do the same thing on X test. However, we're of course not going to scale down the Y data. Why? Because the Y data is basically just uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So basically just the digits, the AND classification. So these are the labels and we do not want to scale the labels down from 0 to 1. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. So basically we scaled down the X values and the next uh, step is to now define the model. And we can choose uh, to define the model however we want. But what we're going to do is we're going to basically take an input layer, uh, two dense layers in between, so two hidden layers and one output layer. This is a very simple way to do it. Uh, you could also use convolutional neural networks and all these things, but we're going to keep it simple here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new model by saying model equals tf dot keras dot layers. No, sorry, dot, what was it? Dot models 
dot sequential and this is basically just saying that we create a, an ordinary feed forward neural network just a uh, basic neural network and now we're going to add some layers here so we're going to say model dot add and uh, we're going to add a new layer new keras dot layers and this layer is going to be a flattened layer and a flattened layer is basically just a one-dimensional layer because what we actually have is we have 28 times 28 pixels in all of our images. Uh, so this would be more of a grid. And what we do here is we flatten out the layer so that we have, I don't know what's 28 times 28, something like seven, 700. We, we had the number last video, I think 748, 784, something like that. Uh, and basically we just use a flattened layer here and we can specify the input shape of the flattened layer uh, to be 28 times 28. So these are all the pixels of each individual uh, image of a handwritten digit. And we feed that into the input layer. And then this input layer is followed by a dense layer. So keras.layers.dense, which basically means just that uh, all the neurons are connected to the previous uh, layer and the next layer. So um, we now have to specify the units. We say units equals, now we can choose a number uh, that you want. For example, you could say 64, you could say 128, 256. Just pick a number of uh, neurons that we want to have in this layer. The more the, uh, the more neurons you have, the more complicated, the more sophisticated the layer becomes, the more uh, nuances you can have. Uh, so I'm going to pick 128. And we now need to specify an activation function. And I'm just going to take the simple rectify linear unit function, so relu, and I think that's it. But actually, I think this is not how you specify it. You need to say, at least that's how I did it in my code, tf.nn.relu. Maybe it also works with just specifying relu item, I don't know. Um, and then we basically do the same layer again. So we want to have two hidden layers that are exactly the same. And in the end, what we have is a uh, an output layer, which is again a dense layer. This time, however, this time, however, it is uh, with ten units. So we have ten neurons, and the activation function is the tf .nn softmax activation function. And this activation function is basically the function that tries to take all the outputs. So basically we have 10 neurons and each neuron has a certain activation. How likely it is, for example, that the number is, or the digit is a two or an eight or a seven. And what softmax does is it adds up or it scales the values down so that they all add up to one so that we get the percentages, the probability of that number uh, being the result, the classification. So this is how we build the model. It's now done. We have a flattened layer, two dense layers in between two hidden layers and one dense output layer with a softmax function. And now what we need to do is we now just need to compile the model. So I'm not going, uh, going to get too much into the, detail of, uh, into the details of compilation. We just say model.compile and specify an optimizer. It's a little bit laggy right now. I don't know what's going on. Optimizer atom and loss function. I think that's yeah, loss, uh, sparse categorical cross entropy. I think that was what it's called. Yes. Uh, so basically, we define this loss function. We talked about the role of the loss function before, and uh, then we define the metrics that we want to look after, and the metrics uh, or the metric we're interested in is the accuracy. Accuracy. So this is how we compile the model. And then the next step, we of course have to fit the model. So now we're going to train the neural network. We just see model.fit and we pass the training data x train and the training data y train. And this is how we basically train the model. Now what we can also specify is a number of epochs. And the epochs, uh, this number is basically just saying how many times is the model going to see the same data over and over again? How many times are we going to repeat the whole process? And in this case, I'm just going to pick the number three, just three epochs. Now, what we can also do is we can go ahead and uh, evaluate the model. So we can say accuracy and loss equals model.evaluate uh, x, uh, no, not train, sorry, x test and y test. 
to get the accuracy and the loss. So we can say print accuracy and print loss. And after that, what we're going to do is we're going to say mal.safe and we're going to save it as digits.mal and that's basically it. And we're doing that because after we've trained the model, what we're going to do is we're going to scan in our own images. We're going to uh, either scan them with a scanner or basically just draw them in paint and feed in our own images into the neural network to classify our own handwritten digits. Um, but instead of training this thing over and over again, we're just going to save the result and later on load the result. So let's run this and see what happens. <clears throat> Should work out. Let's see. Take some time. There you go. So it starts with epoch one and as you can see it trains on 60,000 training examples. So maybe the whole data set is even more because I said 60,000. Uh, however, what you can see here on the right is the accuracy and the loss uh, in real time while it's training. And this is pretty damn accurate. 96% of accuracy when classifying handwritten digits. 97, 98 as you can see right now. This is crazy. This means that the computer when we draw a handwritten digit that he's never seen before, it has never seen before, um, that it has a 97% accuracy. This is what you see here. So, or is it? I don't know. I think I swapped this, these maybe. I think this is the loss and this is the accuracy. So I, I named them, let's just change that, loss and accuracy. I'm not going to run this again, uh, but basically this is the accuracy. Uh, 97 percent we have a loss of 0 0.09 which is actually pretty good because we have a 97 percent uh, accuracy when a computer when our neural network sees images that it has never seen before because the test images were new for him for it sorry I'm always seeing him uh, so as you can see that's quite accurate and now we're going to get into uh, scanning in or loading our own images or our own handwritten digits into the script so now let's go ahead and draw some handwritten digits in Paint, of course, because that's the best software out there. And of course, what we need to do is we need to resize it to 28 times 28 pixels. And we're going to pick the pen and just draw some numbers here. So this is a two, save it as one. This is a three. Fuck, I overwrote the two. Okay, then let's go ahead and draw a two save as two, the three is now the one. Uh, then let's go ahead and draw a seven and save it as three dot PNG and then go ahead and draw an eight, save it as four dot PNG and last but not least, I don't know, let's go with a five. Okay, this is a very ugly five. And save it as five dot PNG. So there you go. What we're going to do now is we're going to, I hope this is possible, to import them here into this folder. There you go. And now we're going to uh, read them in with OpenCV. So now let us get all of our images in here by starting a for loop for x in range uh, 1 up until 6 so that we get 1 through 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and we're going to say image equals cv.imread, which is the image read function. Going to use an f string here, basically x.png. And we're going to get all of it and the first of the last one. And then we're going to say image equals uh, np.array of image. We can now go ahead and say plt.imshow to see what this looks like. And we can say uh, plt. Actually, not plt. Uh, image 0 and plt.show. But first of all, let's comment out all of this here so that we don't need to train them all again. I think this should work so that you can see what these uh, numbers look like. And this will also explain to you why we need uh, to, actually we need to change the color map first. So basically we have to say here cmap equals 
plt.cm.binary. And what you'll notice is that our numbers are basically white on black, even though we need black on white, because otherwise our neural network, as you can see, will be confused. So we have a, sorry, we have a three here, we have a two here and all that, but we need to be, uh, we need to have it the other way around. So we're going to say np.invert all of this array, and then we should get the black on white digits, as you can see. So the next step is to now say, before we do all of this, we are going to say prediction equals a model. And now we need to get rid of the comments here again so that we can use all of our code. We're going to say model.predict and we're going to say predict on the image. And then what we get here is we get the results, the activations of, or the softmax results of all the output neurons. So basically, how likely is it to be a six? How likely is it to be an eight and so on? Uh, and what we actually want is we want to get only the results. So only the classification. And since we have digits from zero to nine, uh, fortunately the index of a position uh, or the index of a neuron is uh, equivalent to the class. So if I have the highest activation at the neuron uh, with the index six, uh, the result is probably a six. So what we need to do here is we're going to say print and we're going to print np.argmax of the prediction. So argmax is basically giving us the index of the highest value. So in this case, the classification. And let's add a string here. So let's say f string. The result is probably, and then we can use some curly brackets here. And this should do it, in my opinion. I think this is right. Let's see. We're going to have to train a model once again because I didn't load it. You would just have to use uh, TensorFlow or tf.keras.models.loadmodel, .model, I think. And then you could do it as well. But it doesn't take a lot of time to train a model, so let's see what it says. <clears throat> should be quite accurate. 97 accuracy. So the first one, the result is probably a three. Yes, it is. The result is probably two. Yes, it is. The result is probably seven. Yes, it is. The result is probably three. No, that's not true. But I get why he maybe thinks this is a three. It's a, not the best eight you could draw. The result is probably five. Okay, so he got four out of five correct. Uh, maybe if you do some real handwritten digits, which you scan with your scanner into the computer, it will be more accurate because, you know, with paint, uh, paint and handwritten digits is not the same. So maybe this is why he failed on the three or the eight. Uh, so that is basically how you load your own images, your own handwritten digits to classify them with a neural network. So that was the video on handwritten digits recognition with TensorFlow and neural networks. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, hit the like button to support this channel. Of course, feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more future videos for free. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.